Good afternoon. The way that movies and television portray cyanide would lead you to think that even the smallest of exposures are lethal within seconds. But somewhat unsurprisingly, the reality is different. Firstly, there is a minimum dose required for acute cyanide poisoning to be fatal, with the size of this dose depending on the source of the cyanide. If we're talking about hydrogen cyanide, then it's somewhere in the range of 1 to 3 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. However, if we're talking about sodium or potassium cyanide, well, these are heavier molecules. And now we're talking about 4 to 15 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Secondly, following exposure, there exists a window of time in which treatment may be given and the person's life saved. But before I get into what that treatment is, I first want to explain why cyanide is poisonous in the first place. This is cytochrome C oxidase. It is the last enzyme in the respiratory electron transport chain of cells. And if we zoom into its structure, we find this site with a heme group close to a copper ion. Normally, this is where electrons are transferred to oxygen, reducing it and powering the body. Cyanide is a powerful ligand that loves to bind here, and when it does, it's like placing a piece of paper between a battery and its terminals. One possible antidote is amyl nitrite. Amyl nitrite, when inhaled, oxidizes the iron 2 in hemoglobin to iron 3. Cyanide loves iron 3, and it now starts to bind here rather than to our cytochrome C oxidase. However, there are two problems with this treatment. First, the person needs to be breathing. And second, methemoglobin, that is, hemoglobin where the iron has been oxidized to iron 3, can no longer transport oxygen, meaning that there is a limit to how much amyl nitrite can be administered. Another option is vitamin B12. And if we look at its structure, we see a cobalt iron held in a ring. And it is to this metal center that cyanide is able to bind. A major advantage here is that vitamin B12 is already an essential part of our diet with no known toxicity. Finally, I do want to stress that although this is all very interesting, prevention is better than cure. And this is why the CDC and OSH set exposure limits and why scientists always conduct a safety assessment before they start any experimental work.